What do people get for all their hard work under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth never changes. The sun rises and the sun sets, then hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and then turns north. Around and around it goes, blowing in circles. Rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. Then the water returns again to the rivers and flows out again to the sea. Everything is wearisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. Everything is meaningless. Completely meaningless. So what's the purpose? Well, we're coming to the end of our study in the book of Ecclesiastes. I trust it's been beneficial for you. It's been encouraging to me because week after week, uh, many of you have come up and said, man, Brian, this, this series has kind of hit me right where I live. The things I'm dealing with in my life are the things that we are studying in the book of Ecclesiastes, and, and that encourages me, and so I trust these messages have been an encouragement to you. Not only does worry accomplish nothing, but worry is the opposite of trust. It's the, it's the opposite of trust in verse 30. But if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, uh, oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. What is he saying? When you're worrying, you're not demonstrating faith. And when you're demonstrating faith, you're not worrying. You can't do both at the same time. It's not like chewing gum and walking at the same time. You cannot do both of them at the same time. You're either worrying or you're trusting. You're trusting or you're worrying. You cannot do both. The third thing is worry provokes you to think like an unbeliever. That's powerful. Verse 32, he says this, For the Gentiles seek after all of these things. Here's what he says, you know what? You're not thinking like a Christian. You're not thinking like a believer. You have forgotten that the all-powerful creator of the universe lives inside of you. And you're thinking not like a Christian. You're thinking like an unbeliever when you worry. And the last thing is worry causes you to focus on the wrong things. And I know that, and I'm going to be honest, I struggle with it as much as you do. I don't want you to think that Brian's got this all wrapped up. Man, I struggle with it as much as you do. And I struggle, but I realize that worry takes my mind off of what I should have my mind on. When I'm thinking about this problem and I think about the consequences, I'm not thinking about Jesus. And when I think about Jesus, for some reason, I'm not thinking about the problems that I have. Jesus says it this way, therefore do not be anxious saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. Don't focus on those things. But he ends by saying, you know the verse, seek first the kingdom of God. If you seek God's kingdom first, then all of these things will be added unto don't allow the trials of life to sorrow you. Don't allow the trials of life to vex you or worry you. Don't let them shake your trust in God. Refuse to worry. So, so how do we live life to the fullest? We rejoice in our youth. How do we live life to the fullest? We refuse to worry. We, we remove vexation from our life. But the third thing is this. We remember our Creator. Chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. This is such a great passage, and I'm going to take just a few minutes and, and walk through it. But he, but he basically says two things in this passage. The first is this, and then we'll kind of flesh it out a little bit. The first is this. Give your life to God while you are young. Give your life to God while you are young. The word remember in the passage means more than just to think about God. You might sit back and say, hey, Brian, I got that covered. Probably four or five times during the course of the day I think about God. 
And so I'm remembering him. That's not what the passage is saying. To remember him doesn't mean that he comes into your mind and then he, then he leaves your mind just as quickly. The word remember means to consider with the intention to obey is the idea. I'm not just, I'm not just thinking about it. I am contemplating on it. I am meditating on it. I am thinking about my Creator and what my Creator would have me to do. Kind of an Old Testament version of WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would the Creator do in this situation? How would Jesus respond? Remember your Creator all the days of your life. All the hours of your day. Keep the Creator in your heart and mind. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. The second thing that I wrote down is this. It is easier for young people. It is easier for young people to give their lives to trust God before the challenges of life overtake them. Notice what he says. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say I have no pleasure in them remember your creator trust in Jesus Christ become a follower of Jesus while there is still time you know statistics are absolutely amazing and I know that they say that the majority of statistics are made up. And so uh, I know sometimes you've got you to decide whether you're going to trust in statistics. But I think this one statistic is overpowering and it's true. 85% of believers trust in Jesus Christ before the age of 14. Think about that. 85% of believers trust in Jesus Christ before the age of 14. Let's do a survey. Might prove me wrong today, all right? How many of you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, committed your life to Jesus, were saved? How many of you did that before the age of 14? Would you lift your hands all over the building? All right. Look all over the building. A good number. Not sure if it's 85%, but it's a significant number of us. Statistics show that the older you are, the more difficult it is to become a follower of Jesus. Why is that? We tend to get set in our ways, do we not? Life seems to harden us just a little bit. We've experienced the bitterness of life. We've, we know Christians who don't act like Christians. And it hardens us to the gospel. And so if we're not careful, instead of moving us towards Jesus, we allow life to move us away from Jesus. And so Solomon says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember, youth is relative. I am 52 years not old. I am 52 years young, all right? And whatever your age is, you are young as well. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Let me pause for a second and say, that's why Operation Christmas Child, what we're doing today is so very important. As Donna mentioned, one out of every three kids that receive one of these boxes make a commitment to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. They're reached while they are young. And I would, I would challenge, first of all, our young people today. Young people, give your life to Christ now. Make a decision that you are going to be a follower of Jesus Christ now. That, that the struggles and the burdens of life are not going to pull you away from Him. Give your life to Him now. Remember Him in the days of your youth. And if you're here and you've never given your life, you've never trusted Jesus Christ, you've never by faith accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior, here's an admonition. The clock is ticking. And you are not getting any younger. 
The older you get, the older I get, the more difficult it is to make those decisions. Trust God while you're young. Here's another point. Continue to live for God as you grow older. Continue to live for God as you grow older. Life is brief. Life life passes very, very quickly. Don't stray from God. Continue to live for Him as you would get older. I wish so badly that we could say, hey, you know what, as we conclude this book, we have a really special guest that's going to be with us next week. And next week, King Solomon's going to be here. And we could introduce King Solomon and and we'd say, hey, uh, you know, Solomon, you know, Saul, I don't know what we'd call him, first name basis, you know. Um, let's just do a little bit of an interview. As you look out across our congregation, Solomon, what is, the, what is the advice that you would give to our congregation? And I'm sure Solomon would say something like this. Don't make the mistakes that I made. I pursued the wrong things. I allowed the, the, the successes and even the enjoyments of my life to pull me away from God. And God was gracious enough to give me time to turn my life around and come back to Him. Solomon would say, don't make the same mistake. You might sit back and say, hey Brian, I am 40 years young. I'm 50 years young. I'm 28 years young. I have plenty of time. Life is brief. This passage gives us a beautiful description of the aging process. Kind of walk through these verses with me. In verse 3 of chapter 12, he said, In the day when the keepers of the house tremble. Most believe that he's talking about your arms and your hands. When you get older, how those keepers of the house begin to tremble. All right? And the strong men are bent. Your legs and your knees weaken. And you begin to walk bent over. The grinders cease because they are few. You start to lose your teeth. And, it, and it's more difficult to chew. All right? And those who look through the windows are dimmed. You begin to lose your eyesight little by little. Verse 4, and the doors on the street are shut. Your hearing starts to fail. You cannot hear what is outside. It continues down farther along. I'll jump down. Verse 5, they're afraid also of what is high, the terrors of the way. The almond tree blossoms. Your hair begins to turn white. Now, now, I'm going to pause because I, I didn't think mine was turning white. And, and one of our dear ladies came up to me the other day and said, Pastor Brian, if your son had gray hair, why, well, I swear he'd look just like you. And I'm sitting back thinking, first of all, I didn't think I had gray hair. All right. Secondly, I'm not sure he looks that much like me. But he says, when the almond tree blossoms, evidently my almond tree is beginning to blossom. All right. The grasshopper drags itself along. You get weakened, weaker, and you get slower. And then it comes down and it says, the silver cord is snapped and the golden bowl is broken. Death comes. Here's what Solomon reminds us of. The brevity and the frailty of life. He said it over and over again in this book, and we've seen it, but life goes so fast. Oh my, it goes so fast. Dedicate your life to Jesus while you are still able. Remember your Creator now. Don't put it on your agenda for 2020 or 2025. You don't know whether you're going to be alive in 2020 or 2025. You're alive now. You have your senses now. You can dedicate your heart and your life to Him. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Don't allow age to overtake you. And rob you of the opportunity to do that. The last thing is this passage reminds us of the importance of finishing well. Not only talks about starting well. 
but it talks about finishing well. And and no matter what age you are in life, I, I would challenge you, finish well. Paul said it this way, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And there is waiting for me whenever I reach the throne of God, a crown of righteousness, which God gives to those who love Him. Finish well. Wherever you are in life, finish well. Chuck Swindoll, I'll tell the story and I'm done. Chuck Swindoll tells the story of an older couple that had kind of lived their own life. God was a part of their life, but really wasn't a big part of their life. I mean, they raised kids, they had jobs, they had baseball and all of that, and God was a part of their life. He just wasn't the most important part of their life. And so in the sunset years of their life, they decided to go to a Bible conference in Colorado The theme of the conference was looking unto Jesus. And during that conference, both the husband and wife decided that they were going to put Jesus, finally, they were going to put Jesus on the throne of their life. And before they left, they got in their car to leave the conference. Before they left the conference, they prayed in their car, Lord, we give you first place. We've lived many years to ourselves, no longer. We've decided to spend the balance of our life serving you. No matter what happens, God, the rest of our days are yours. They left the conference. On the way home, a car swerved in front of them. And the older husband swerves out of the way to miss the car. And he swerves and goes down over an embankment into a river below. As water begins to pour into the car, thankfully the wife pulls herself out of her window and the husband pulls himself out of his window. And they're standing on the roof of their car as water flowed around their ankles. They were so stunned and so grateful that God had saved their life. There on the car, they grabbed hands and they began to sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, every creature here below. They praised God for saving their life. After singing, they looked up at the bridge, and there were a crowd of people that had gathered and was watching them. Highway Patrolman was there. He actually had taken off his hat and put his hat on his heart as they sang that song. Suddenly, the husband was seized with the realization that even this could be a testimony that could be used for the glory of God. With a twinkle in his eye and with a smile on his lips, he looked up at the people there on the bridge and said, you might have wondered why we called this meeting today. (laughs) And he shared Jesus Christ with all of those people. True story, Chuck Swindoll says. So here's the question. Are you living life to the fullest? Not according to your standards, but according to his standards. Jesus says rejoice, or Solomon says rejoice in the days of your youth. Remove vexation, refuse to worry, and remember your creator. No matter where you are in this chronological order of life, Remember your creator. Why? Because the windows dim and the knees bend and the years stop working and the silver cord breaks and the bowl is broken. And one day before you and I know it, we will stand before God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Live life to the fullest and realize that that can only be done when Jesus Christ is a part of your life. Would you stand with me today with your head bowed and your eyes closed? Our praise team is here and we're going to end in a unique way today. First of all, I would say if you're here today and you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you would say, Brian, 
I, I don't know for sure that I'm saved. I don't know for sure that my sins are forgiven. I don't know for sure that heaven is my home. I want to remember my creator, but I don't know how. We would invite you to come. We have counselors down front that would love to take the word of God and would love to show you how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven and that heaven is your home. Maybe you're a believer that has wandered far from God. And now it's time to come home, like Solomon came home. I, I would exhort you today, come home. Come home to your Savior who loves you, who is worthy of your praise, of your life. And if you want to come and just spend a few moments at an altar, we'd encourage you to do that. But we're also, as we sing this song, I Surrender, we're going to ask you to bring your boxes, your Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. And let's put them around the altar here. And if you would just pause as you bring your box and spend some time in prayer over that box, I'm going to lead us in a prayer of dedication in just a few moments. So however it is that God's speaking to your heart, if we're here, if we can help you, let us do that. If you want to bring your boxes and lay them here and spend a few moments in prayer, do that. And then we'll end with a prayer of dedication in just a few moments. Lord, thank you so much that you love us Thank you that you're gracious to us, you're kind to us. And Father, we confess that at times we live our lives as if you were not the most important thing in our life. We allow the busyness and the struggles and the trials of life to, to cloud over our judgment. And we make poor decisions. God, help us today to remember you. Help us to consider what you say in your word with the, with the idea of obeying it. Lord, help us to determine to live our lives for you wherever we are in that chronological calendar. If there's somebody here that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, may they do so today. If they're believers that have wandered far away from God, may they come back today. And Lord, as we bring these gifts, these boxes and we present them to you. We ask that you would use them in the lives of boys and girls all around the world. Take our small efforts and use them to impact children for all of eternity. We love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.